Welcome fam, how you doing? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alright. Buy it? I mean, come on, think about it. It's so pretty. It's got lots of wisdom inside. Buy it! Buy all of them. Buy all of them. Okay, we are ready to study. Right, Habanera? Yeah. Okay, let's study, study. So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, we're in the section of purification. Chapter 61, Wiping Over the Socks. Al Mugira bin Shuba narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, performed wudu and wiped over the socks, Jawrabin, and the sandals. Daif. Abu Dawood said, Abdur Rahman bin Mahdi would not narrate this hadith since it is well known from Al Mugira bin Shuba is that the Prophet, peace be upon him, wiped over the cups. Abu Dawood said, and this has also been related from Abu Musa al Ashi, oh sorry, al Ashari, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he would wipe over the socks, Jawrabain. However, this narration is not continuous in its chain nor strong. Abu Dawood said, Ali bin Abi Talib, Ibn Masud, Al Bara bin Azib, Anas bin Malik, Abu Umama, Sahal bin Saad, and Amr bin Huray would all wipe over the socks, Jarabin, and this has been related from Umar bin Al Khattab and Ibn Abbas as well. Comments It is permissible to wipe over footwear, old or torn or with holes, provided it one does not break convention or feel shameful when wearing them. Chapter 62, another proof for wiping. It has been narrated from Aus bin Abi Aus al-Thakafi that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, performed wudu and wiped over his sandals and feet. And one of the narrators, Abad, said, I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, come to Kizana of a people meaning al Midaya a basin. Musda did not mention al Mida and Kizna. Then they were in accord, and he performed wudu and wiped over his sandals and feet. Daif. Comments The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, wiped over the socks and sandals. A number of scholars restrict the meaning of wiped over his sandals and feet to indicate that he was wearing socks or kufs at the time. Well, that was not been stated in the narration. Chapter 63, How One Should Wipe It was reported from Urwa bin Azubair from al Mugira bin Shuba <clears throat> that, the pro that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would wipe over kufs. Others aside from Muhammad said, he wiped over the top of the hoofs, Hassan. It was reported from Al Amash, from Abu Ishaq, from Abd Hair, from Ali, who said, Were this religion based upon intellect, the bottom of the hoof would have more right to be wiped than the top part. And yet I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, wipe over the top of his hoofs, Daif. This hadith has also been reported from Al Amash. He said, Were this religion based upon intellect, the lower part of the feet would have more right to be wiped than the top part. And yet the Prophet, peace be upon him, wiped over the top of his kuf. Daif. There is another version from Al Amash with this chain for this hadith. He said, I did not think except that the lower sides of the feet had more right to be washed than the upper side. Until I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, wipe over the top of his hoofs. Waki reported it from Al Amash with his chain, and he said in it, I used to think that the bottom of the feet had more right to be wiped than the top part. Until I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, wipe over the top of them. Waki said, meaning the hoofs. Isa bin Yunus reported from Al Amash, just as Waki reported it. Abu As-Sauda reported it from Ibn Abar Hair, from his father. He said, I saw Ali perform wudu, and he washed the top of his feet. He then said, 
Had I not seen the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, do this, I would have not done it. And he completed the hadith. Daif. Interesting. Very interesting. al mugira bin Shuba said, I poured water for the Prophet, peace be upon him, to perform wudu. With during the expedition of Tabuk, he wiped over the top portion of his hoofs and the bottom portion. Daif. Abu Dawood said, It has been conveyed to me that Thar, one of the narrators, did not hear this hadith from Raja, another narrator. Comments According to authentic ahadith, wiping over the upper portion of the footwear is sufficient. There we go. Chapter 64, Splashing Water on the Private Parts It was reported from Sufyan from Mansur, from Mujahid, from Sufyan bin al-Hakam al-Thakafi, or some said his name was Al-Hakam bin Sufyan al thakafi who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, after he urinated, would perform wudu and splash water on his private part, Hassan. Abu Dawood said, A group of narrators were in accord with Sufyan for this chain. Some of them said, Al-Hakam or Ibn Al-Hakam. There is another chain from Mujahid from a man from the tribe of Thaqib, from his father, that he saw the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, urinate, then splash water on his private part, Hassan. There is another chain from Mujahid, from Al-Hakam, or Ibn Al-Hakam on the authority of his father, reported that the Prophet, peace be upon him, urinated, then performed wudu, and splash water on his private part, Hassan. Comments. It is also recommended to sprinkle water on one's garments around the area of genitals. In addition to the reward for following the sunnah, there is the added advantage of driving away devilish situations arising from constant fear of urine dripping out of due to a weak bladder. Moms get like a, after I think you're a third child, you if you laugh sometimes you can accidentally urinate on yourself. So. I wonder if something like that exists for men, where their retention to hold their bladder loosens. It's quite interesting when you think about it, how age affects us. Chapter 65. What should one say after finishing wudu? Uqba bin Amr said, We used to be with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, each one serving himself, and we used to take turns taking care of the camels. One day it was my turn to take care of the camels, so I took them to their watering place until the evening. After returning, I found the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, while he was giving the people a sermon. I heard him say, There is not a single one of you who performs wudu and performs it well, then prays two rakahs, while he is paying attention with his heart and face, except that its meaning paradise becomes obligatory for him. I said, Bahin, Bahin, how great is this? A person sitting in front of me said, And what has been preceded in Awukba is even better than this. I looked to see who he was, and he turned out to be Umar bin al Khattab. So I said, And what was that which was said before I came, O Abu Hafs? He said, He, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said before you came, there is none of you who performs the wudu and performs it well, and then says after he completes it, I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah alone, having no partners, and I testify that Muhammad is his servant and messenger, except that all eight doors of paradise will be open for him. He can enter it through whichever one he pleases. Sahih. Okay, so this one's really cool because I watched a demonstration of Dr. Oth Othman. He's a, he speaks in Arabic on YouTube. Oh, his last, the other part of his name I forgot, forgive me. But he was giving a demonstration of wudu. And at the end he said this, La ilaha illallah, ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah. So, bismillah at the beginning. But we can add this at the end if we're not. Let's do it. 
There is another chain from Uqba bin Amr al-Juhani from the Prophet peace be upon him. Similarly, he did not mention that he took care of the camels. And he also added after saying, perform the wudu and perform it well. And then raised, raises his eyes to the sky. The remainder of the hadith was similar in meaning to the hadith of Muawiyah number 169, Daif. Maybe the Daif part is looking at the eyes of the sky. Because remember other hadith said that, you know, people who stare at the sky, it was like, not really, like he felt sorry for them. It's not the way. I, I like looking at the sky, but it's not like you're like praying to the sky, you know? It's just healthy for your eyes to see distance because you're always in a box and it kind of cuts your vision back and makes your eyes weaker. Comments. While saying the supplications, it is correct to look up at the sky or point to the fingers toward it. Hmm. See, this is one where you would compare and contrast it. Because others would say you look at the ground, at the spot on the ground, between your feet or depending what position you're in. So you really would be interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe it's like, oh Allah Akbar. But to just be like, da -da 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 -da. I don't know. Because I've seen that you're supposed to control your gaze. But we'll see. Maybe it's permissible for both, but in moderation. I don't know. We'll check it out. A person praying all the prayers with one would do. Amr bin Almar al Bajali said, I asked Anas bin Malik about the wudu. So he said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, would perform wudu for every prayer, and we would also pray all the prayers with one wudu. Sahih. Okay, so one wudu. Sulaiman bin Bureda narrated from his father, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, prayed on the day of the conquest of Mecca. All five prayers with one would do, and he wiped over his hoofs. Umar said to him, I saw you today doing something that you have not done before. He, peace be upon him, said, I did it on purpose. Sahih. Chapter 66, Surah Separating the Actions of Wudu it was narrated from Jabir bin Hazim that he heard Katada bin Dima say, Anas narrated to us that a person came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, after having performed wudu. He had left the fingernails width of dry skin on his foot. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, told him, Go back and perform your wudu well. Sahih. Abu Dawood said, This hadith is not known to be from Jabir bin Hazim and no one narrated it in a marfu form, attributing it to the Prophet, peace be upon him, except from Abin Wahhab. And it also has been related from Makil bin Ubaidullah al-Jazari, from Abu al-Zubair, from Jabir, from Umar, from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Similarly, he said, go back and perform your wudu well. So really just getting you to focus on making sure you don't leave a drive spot, right? Very important. I'm starting to really, you know, memorize all this, because if you notice, the other books of Hadith also start out with wudu, and then you remember, like, oh, they said that, they said that, like, very educational. 